Okay, hey guys, and welcome to week 49 at the underwaterrealm.com video blog. We are approaching the one year mark, and everybody is working full steam ahead to get us towards next week's production meeting, where everybody's going to be coming down from all over the country and making those really important plans to get us through the next nine months. So, Everybody's been really, really busy. Shaz, as you saw last week, is working on the previs. He's still building that asset library. So here's a few of the models that he's been making this week in the run-up to storyboarding or prevising that first of the five short films. So we're making a couple of the characters there that you might recognize from some of the footage of previous weeks. And while Shaz has been doing that, myself, Eve, and Rich have taken ourselves up to London to go and shoot in Solar Lighting Studios. This is for Chapter 2 of the At Eve Hazelton DVD lighting masterclass and it's all about industry kits so we had a great time with the guys up there shooting with all sorts of stuff we had Kina flows we had HMI's Fresnel's we had all kinds of open face lights in various wattages uh, and just a really really good working environment too so we had a play with some really really nice toys um, and Eve had a great time getting her hands on all sorts of lighting kits that so was really really good fun what I've been doing this week along with a really good friend from school a guy called Steve Barrow and this guy honestly what he doesn't know about technology in IT isn't worth knowing. We've set about the task of making a storage server for the for the network. For the system that we're working on now, the, the amount of footage and the amount of file size that's coming through, we just don't have a system in place for making sure that it's safe and that it's fast and that we have a workflow that makes sense so that when Eve's finished cutting something, we don't have to transfer hundreds of gigabytes of footage from her machine to my machine so that I can start the post workflow. It's just, it's a very clunky workflow we've got here at the moment, and it's long past overdue that we actually did something about it. So, with Steve, we took a look at a, a couple of different options for things that are available off the shelf. Um, unfortunately, in order to match the amount of storage that we require and the speed that we require, HP wanted £68,000 to build a system that would fulfill our requirements. So Steve and I put together a list and a kind of a spec sheet for what we needed and have actually built this thing for under £3,000, which is just it's still blowing my mind. that It's not quite finished yet, so hopefully it's going to work. But in theory, the spec of the machine that we've built is capable of storing up to 40 terabytes, although we've only got 16 in there at the moment. Um, it's also going to be running off an old networking system called InfiniBand, which isn't really used very much, but it's actually 10 times faster than gigabit Ethernet, which means in theory, as long as we can optimize everything just right, people have managed to get speeds of almost a gigabyte every second across this network, which is just blisteringly fast. I mean, it's far faster than your internal hard drives can store that data. So what it means is that we're going to be able to have central data storage. All that epic footage is going to be going on this central server and we'll be able to stream that out really, really fast over InfiniBand to our three main workstations here in the studio. So we've had loads and loads of questions. We've been tweeting pictures of this thing during the build. So we're just going to be doing a very quick walkthrough for you of what this thing is, how it works, and why you might want to think about something, or not the same, similar for your workflow. So the thing to think about here is that as, you're, as you kind of mature as a filmmaker and you start working on projects with more responsibility, higher budget, you need to make sure that the files you're creating are safe, that they are backed up, and that it's not just stored on a hard drive somewhere because they will go wrong. We've made all these mistakes in the past. We were using, for our sins, we were using something called a RAID 0, which is where you can take a number of hard drives, string them all together, and you will actually multiply the speed by the number of hard drives that you put in there. But there's no redundancy, there's no backup, and that actually means it's four times more likely to go wrong. In fact, apparently, if you put four of these hard drives together in a RAID 0, which is what I've had in my computer for a couple of years, the probability of that lasting for three years without going wrong is less than 50%. So it's definitely a no-no for any important storage. So there's all these different things to learn, all different types of RAID array that you can build. We've gone for a RAID 6, which means out of 24 drives that we can fit in our system, two of them can go wrong at the same time and it will automatically back up onto two hot spares without losing any data. There'll just be a drop in performance. So it's a very, very safe way of storing an awful lot of data. What we've done is we've actually had an old hard rig case, which is a very, very tough flight case with a rail system inside it. We've had that for years and years and years with the intention of building a computer inside it and we've never got around to it. We've only ever used it for carrying light stands, believe it or not, but we've finally got a use. So we've bought a fantastic 24 bay server box from a company called Xcase. And this is effectively a giant 
PC case. It's got space for a motherboard, space for a power supply, and it's got 24 hard drive bays in the front attached to back planes. So what we've then done as a very, very quick rundown of the build is put a motherboard in, put a RAID controller in through two SAS expanders, and then those SAS expanders talk to each of those back planes, and each back plane talks to four hard drives. Um, we've then rigged it up to power, rigged it up to InfiniBand cards, and Bob's your uncle. Effectively, what you've got there, along with a UPS, which means if we have a power cut, it will carry on running, is one home media server, which can connect to the internet. I can log into it from my iPad and control the storage, and we can log into it almost as if it's a local hard drive from each one of those PCs. So we'll be giving you a couple more updates with this thing as we start to get some feedback of to how fast it's going. But so far, things are looking good. It's easily fast enough to stream red epic footage off it across gigabit at the moment into a local computer and play in real time in one quarter res which is you know easily enough it's uh, it's effectively HD so fantastic system um, you'll probably see it blinking away there behind me it's got there are quite a few LEDs on the front of it but updates on that as we come over the next week we're also going to be showing you the previs as it comes out and of course next week's all important production meeting. We're also going to be nipping up to London to see Philip Bloom on Thursday at one of his lighting master classes. So if any of you are going to be there, we will catch you there and we will see you next week at the underwaterrealm.com.